coming from a small town and moving to a big city like LA, it's a bit intimidating at first, and all you really know are the obvious places like the Hollywood sign, the Santa Monica Pier, but really, truly, once you get settled, you realize that there are so many layers to the city and so many hidden gems. And I think that it's really important to even be by yourself and to go off exploring in the city that you live in. So this is actually one of my favorite hidden gems of Los Angeles. It's the Roslyn Hotel, the rooftop specifically of the Roslyn Hotel. It's just all about the stunning views of the city that are just so breathtaking. This hotel used to be one of the grandest hotels in downtown Los Angeles, but when downtown Los Angeles lost its glamour, the hotel went into disrepair. Just across the way is its sister hotel. The U2 music video for Where the Streets Have No Name. You can see this sign right in the background, which is pretty cool. And if you remember the Bono Vim Vendors movie, Million Dollar Hotel, the opening scene was actually shot right across the way when the guy just runs and jumps off the rooftop. Downstairs, underground, there's actually a speakeasy that's still intact from over 50 years ago. Wow. This is a speakeasy that was um, used, the last time it was actually used was like 1942. This was back in the Prohibition days when they were right. bootlegging and stuff. You know, to get down these speakeasies, there was some tunnels that went all throughout the city. This tunnel here went from here all the way to City Hall. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, in the days when there was the prohibition, the, the mayor and the city officials were basically convicting for drinking, they would come down here and party themselves. Wow. You know? Back in yeah. the heyday, this was the place to come. This was it. Right in the center of South Central Los Angeles, we have one of our most amazing hidden gems of LA, which is the Watts Tower. This piece was actually made by Simon Rodia. He was an Italian immigrant, and it took him about 33 years to make. Some of my people that say, what is he doing? Or some other people that they think I was crazy, and, uh, and some people that they say he's gonna do something. He would pay his neighbors about three cents a bag for everybody to bring used plates and used Coke bottles and such pieces that you can see sporadically through the whole structure. In the 50 years that they've been up, it's never been vandalized. It's so amazing to me. I mean, the guy built everything by hand. He carved everything himself. Up until a couple weeks ago, the towers didn't have as much attention, but there was actually an article written in the New York Times about the Watts Tower, and it was also featured in one of the Simpsons episodes. So hopefully now they will be able to raise more money, not only for the towers, but also for the art center, which will help the, the community in its entirety. It's unlike anything you've ever seen, really. on the Frank Lloyd Wright property, and we are actually on the rooftop of the house that his grandson, Eric Lloyd Wright, built. But he never got to finish because of time and money. Not many people know about this place because it's really hidden in the canyons of Malibu, and we're about 1,800 feet up right now. There's still architectural workshops that are held here and, and parties and cultural events. And next week, they're actually going to celebrate the solstice here.
you wouldn't know it, but we're just a few minutes away from downtown Los Angeles, and we're actually at one of the largest artist complexes in the world. It's called The Brewery, and, and it was once owned by Pabst Blue Ribbon. Now it houses over 300 different artists, and everybody has their own individual spaces, and they're able to be creative and have their own community. There's a sculptor named Bruce Gray that I'm actually going to visit. Welcome to my studio. Thank you so much for having me. This is really unbelievable. Tell me a little about your place. I've been here 20 years now. It's come a long way. I mean, this was completely empty. There wasn't even a bathroom or walls or anything. The big building across the way, which was uh, one of the first LA power plants, it's been completely empty oh, for wow. like the first 10 years I was here. Why is this place so unknown and you're sort of right next to downtown LA? It's a little bit of a mystery to all of us. But is it? <laughs> even the people that we have living around the neighborhood who've been here for eons, and when they come through like our, our walks, they never heard of this never place. Never heard of before. this place. Unless you come down that nice. kind of cul de sac road, you know. You would never know. This was actually the first power station built west of the Mississippi. And interestingly enough, one of the scenes from Vanilla Sky was actually shot right inside the power plant. From South Central, from the Watts Tower to the Roslyn Hotel in downtown LA, to the Brewery Arts Complex, all the way to Malibu at the Wright House. This is so great to be able to just strap on your boots and go discover and explore different parts of the city that you just wouldn't ever be able to see.